TP number 82, 2024. We're going to get a bunch in today because I'm so far behind. And I can't believe we have not discussed this topic over the last five, six years we've been doing this. And that is mechanical failures with penile implants. And I've always based my decisions on one uh, unique paper looking at the two companies. It's the only duopoly in surgical devices, as you should know. Um, and there is a difference uh, between the two companies, but I'm not so sure that that, pa that paper is totally accurate because it's based on paperwork that's generated by companies. Um, I can tell you that anecdotally, in general, I will quote to my patients, one to 2% of uh, implants will fail per year. So you know, when you get up around 15 years, you're looking at maybe 75% are still working. But what you got to understand is when it comes to a surgical device, penile implants are better than anything else out there. And taking that quote unquote risk to get your penile implant, it's minimal. Think about a knee, a total knee. You, you get a total knee, you have a 30% chance of having some kind of mechanical failure within three years. But everybody, nobody talks about mechanical failures with knees. With the penis, it's like, oh my God, it failed. In general, if you're at a dedicated center and it does fail, it's easy to revise it. Revision is not something you take lightly. Hopefully, the implant was done by a dedicated center, so it won't have this planktonic bacteria called biofilm that will make it high, a higher risk for you to have an infection. But like the mantra of this, uh, um, this MTP uh, program that we've had for so many years, go to a dedicated center, and if it does fail, they'll be able to fix it, and there is a gold, a, a silver lining to this cloud. You can almost always upsize. So let's sort of give the penile implant companies a break because they've done a lot better than any other surgical device that I know out there. So we'll see you on the next one.